The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's very special webinar on getting the most out of the Enhanced Charity Register, as you can see there on the screen. Um, it's an extra special webinar today because we do have a special guest joining us for today's webinar is Commissioner of the ACNC, Dr. Gary Johns, who is going to set the scene and give us a bit of context about the Enhanced New Register and, and really uh, explain how charities can get the most out of it. Good morning. Actually, it's, it's afternoon now. Good afternoon, yeah, Gary. Yeah, good afternoon, Matt. Although it is morning in some parts of the country still, the benefits of a, um, a midday kickoff here in Melbourne means we can get away with good morning or good afternoon. Just before we do get into the topic proper, we've just got a few points of admin to cover. Um, if you're having trouble with the audio of the web, for the webinar, um, you can dial in and there should have been a phone number in the confirmation email that you received upon registering. So if you're having some trouble, dial in and you should be okay for audio. You can ask questions during the webinar and use the GoToWebinar navigation control there on your screen. There should be um, a spot to ask a question. We have a couple of colleagues, Rachel and Tim, standing by ready to answer all your questions. Now, sometimes we do get quite a lot of questions, and if we don't get a chance to get back to your question during the webinar, we will endeavour to get back to you via email later on. Also, we do have a Q&A at the end, so if you wanted to watch the presentation and then come up with a question later on, that's fine too. We'll address it um, live. And also, we're going to send an email that follows this um, a webinar with a link to the recording as well as the slides and some other resources too. So if you miss some things or if you're, you're busy jotting down notes, never fear, you're going to get a copy of this um, later this afternoon or tomorrow. Okay, on to the webinar proper. You can see on your screen we've got an agenda here. First we're going to have a chat with our special guest Commissioner Dr Gary Johns about the importance of the Enhanced Charity Register. We'll then do a demonstration. We'll talk a bit about how charities can really get the most out of it and we'll answer your questions. So Gary, welcome to the webinar. First, if you wouldn't mind setting the scene. Now the Charity Register has been around for well, nearly 10 years now. What makes this update particularly significant? The key to it, Matt, is that if you don't know the name of a charity, you can still find out what charities do. This is the essence. It's always been a register of charities, and quite rightly so, uh, with all of the important documents uh, attaching to that charity, like its constitution and responsible persons and so on. Um, and that's well and good, that's the law. But we wanted to build something uh, much more important, which was to demonstrate to the public all that charities do. And we've managed to do this by getting them to report on their programs. And that's the important point because now the charity register contains more than just a listing of charities that are registered. It does contain thousands of charity programs as well as the charities. Yeah. So uh, we have 60,000 charities uh, on the register um, and we now have at least 80,000 programs. And keep in mind that all of the charities report in, in ways that uh, would enable us to put programs on. So it's, uh, the selection there is by definition the best in Australia, 80,000 programs, and you can find them even not knowing the name of a charity because you'll be able to use words to search among charitable uh, interests that you have, charitable purposes, uh, and if it's not there, it's not on offer by Australian charities. You, you'll find what uh, our, our marvellous sector has to offer Australian people uh, in, in their charitable bazaars. Now for charities, and, and the majority of today's audience, we know uh, there is people involved in charities. How does this change the way they think about the charity register because they've known about it for a long time, but the enhancements mean that it can work differently for them. Yes, look, um, it, this is not a compliance tool. We, we know you have to register in order to get the taxation benefits. We understand that, but this is more than that. You can use it for promotion. Why not? Uh, this is your chance to tell the world 
um, hint, hint, donors <laughs> and volunteers and other charities who, who work in a similar area and, and you may be able to learn from them, they may be able, may be able to learn from you. It's a tool to promote your offering to the Australian public and, and by law actually, the Act tells us we are to inform the public of the work of the sector. We just had to work out a way to do that. We, we, we cracked it, we, we worked out a way to do that. So um, up until last year, we had four and a half million searches of the register and it's been growing each year as uh, I guess the ANCNC is, ACNC is better known than it was. Uh, but this year, we're running at an annual rate of 6 million searches of the register. Now, that's not 6 million people, but it's a lot of people who are having a look at what's on offer. And if you fill out your annual information statement well, and you tell people what your programs are, you've got a chance that you'll, you'll be found. I, I think that's a tremendous thing for a government regulator to be doing. Yeah, definitely. And, and we will get onto a demonstration in a moment. But before we do, just want to touch on the practice of using this now for charities, because it sounds great, but we don't want people to think that it's more difficult than it really is. Putting these programs on the register and getting the most out of the charity register really is easy. It doesn't place any extra burden on a charity, does it? No, uh, our feedback from charities is that this doesn't take much time at all. So very little cost, tremendous benefits. I make this point though, don't leave it to the poor old secretary to fill out the annual information <laughs> statement. The whole committee should have a look at how they fill out the IES, because especially with regard to charity programs, because it's your opportunity to showcase what you do. It'll affect uh, whether people find you. And keep in mind, it has multiple users, whether it's a new one, new person in town wants to look at what's on offer in, in the town uh, and they want to volunteer, support a charity. It's for charities to look at, uh, you know, professional uh, sort of associating themselves with others who do similar works uh, and therefore improving what they do uh, for philanthropists, donors, researchers, the whole bit. Um, so take it seriously. It's not a bureaucratic exercise. It's your chance, the whole committee should discuss it, to say, okay, I think we've got two, maybe three programs. You decide, it's, 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 it's your instrument. And then when you've decided, you, when you log on, you get a chance to pick the category that best describes your program. And hey, the other bit is, if a program ceases, say the funding ends or whatever, take it off the register. If you're lucky enough and you've got a new program starting, put it on the register. It's your chance to keep your information up to date. I'm not going to be looking at it. It's not a compliance exercise. This is for you. So keep it up to date because it's essentially a conversation between you, the charity, and the public of Australia. Excellent points. And I think we will get on to the demonstration of precisely how you can do that in a moment. But that last point is a really good one. Keep it up to date. It's not a compliance tool. It's the thing that you can use to communicate with the potential donors, supporters, volunteers, the public of Australia about your charity's programs. Thank you very much for setting the scene for us today, Dr. Gary Johns. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. And we will let you get on with all the other things you've got to do today. And we'll have our colleague Chris Richards come in and help me provide our audience today with a, with a great demonstration of the Enhanced Charity Register. Thanks again. Thanks, Matt. Okay, everyone. We're going to now have a look at how the uh, register works. We'll bring the register, the Charity Register up on screen. I'll have my colleague Chris come in to help me with this part of the of the presentation today. So what we'll, what we'll do is get the charity register up and hello. <laughs> there we go. We've got we've got Chris there now. We'll, we'll pull the charity register up here and you should be able to see that on your screen in a moment. There we go. Really? Okay and we'll do a bit of a demonstration before having a chat about the sorts of things that uh, charities can do to 
get the most out of the charity register. Okay, uh, Chris, now Dr. Gary Johns has just set the scene for us and explained why it's important. Let's take a closer look at the charity register in practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, first thing, easy. it's easy to find. Um, we've just gone through and, and, and found it there. If you click on search for a charity, as we're, uh, as we're going to do here, um, you'll see there's two tabs now underneath the heading that's, uh, that's there. Um, there's search, search by charity and search by charity program. Um, the charities one, search by charity, that's always been there. At the moment, charity programs is where it defaults to. So that's the default tab that comes up. This is the new section. This is the section that allows us to search for programs. And just quickly before we do get onto the programs, let's just take a quick look at search by charity first, just to show that this is the same as um, it always was or has been. Okay, so I'm just having a look here. As you can see, there's some, um, there's some little uh, windows or little uh, bits and pieces you can enter your information. The first one here is um, search charity name or ABN as it always has been. So that's how you, how you can find a charity. You need to know their name as it's already been mentioned uh, or you can go by their ABN. Um, to, to further sort of narrow things down, you've got the search for uh, a suburb or a postcode. Um, there's some more filters there, which uh, I reckon you're about to click on. There we go. Uh, and they scroll down there as well. Okay, now we'll have a look at, um, yeah, it's a bunch of filters that you can filter. Looking for a charity, but yes. today we are going to have a look at the charity program section. So we'll, um, we'll jump back there. Over. There we go, over to the other tab. Um, so that's the search by charity program tab. Um, just as a you know, a reminder, we'll probably say it a few times. Um, we're not searching for a charity name here. We're searching for a program. Um, now, it can be any program. A charity can run it. It doesn't have to be under the charity's name. Obviously, we're searching for a program. So, first thing we do is you have a look at uh, the little drop down here, type of activity or service, and you've got a number of uh, a number of options there. A whole heap of options there. Um, you can wander over to, to the, the field here for location. Uh, if you know where you're looking, where you wish to look. Um, there's also a drop down there to select whether the program is online or not and who the charity helps, which we, we call beneficiaries. But it's, I guess, generally speaking, the, the sector of the community that the, the program aims to benefit. Okay. Uh, be a way to put it. <laughs> yeah, sorry to jump in. No, right. just, just, to, just to make it clear that you, you don't have to know all of these things, right? So um, it's, it's important that not all fields are required. You can use this in um, each, any of these fields in a way to uh, find what you might be looking for. So let's, let's now test it out with a real one. Um, Chris, uh, let's go. How, how sh what should we look for? Um, all right. Well, let's go and have a look at type of activity or service. I reckon we might have a look for animal welfare. Okay. That's, that's usually a popular one. Um, so we go to that drop down there that you can see on the screen. There's uh, animal welfare uh, there. Um, so you can select that. And uh, let's pick a location. We'll say Parramatta, uh, Parramatta in New South Wales. So there we go. Um, just make sure that we're we're going to have a bit of a look. Wait, hello, oh, there yeah. we go. Okay, so I've typed out, I found animal welfare and um, Parramatta. And just quickly, I might just say, there's a couple of ways here. We've got that one yes. showing up there. Was the A was very easy to find, but of course you can also type type it. Oops, there we go. Type it here and find all the things that begin with animal. We have lots yeah. of specific categories, but we're going for the broader, highest level category here that encompasses many of the more specific ones. There we go. And oftentimes when you're looking at you doing something like this, if you're going to as we say, filter the results. Maybe start with the board result first, and then if you want to narrow it down further and further, that's when you can perhaps look at the more specific stuff uh, underneath, I suppose. So, but as you can see, we've got a few, got a couple of uh, a couple of programs here. Um, now, on the left, you'll see under search results, you'll see uh, two uh, programs that run in the area that we uh, are searching for: animal welfare in Parramatta. So, what you can do, you can click on one of them. We'll, we'll do there. Oh, there we go. Now, it shows up uh, on the map. It shows the location, shows all the other little bits and pieces. But what also happens is when you click on a program and it shows up on the map like this, 
you can then go to the charity that runs the program and you can find out more about the charity that runs the program. Now, this is, this is pretty good. So we'll, we'll go back to where the, the charity listing is, I suppose. Right, we'll just have a look at this one. Okay, so yeah, click through to the charity listing here. You can see that charity is listed here and we can have a look at the programs that we just had to look for. Yeah. Okay, and we can find some more information about those programs there. There we go. And um, I mean, this is great too, because obviously you're looking for a program. You can then find out more information about who's behind the program, who runs the program. And if there are other programs that that charity runs or other locations that might uh, might suit what you're looking for. So it, again, it's, it's being able to search and then search further, I suppose. Um, now we'll go back to the Go back to the what are we doing? Go back to the search results. Here we go. Um, so we've got the uh, the list view here. Um, now that provides the information um, without the map. So that's just sort of the straight up and down uh, text info. So that's pretty pretty handy as well. Um, yeah. It also shows how many locations a charity might have for this program because obviously programs can be across multiple locations. Yeah, that's right. And this one in particular has. Well, they've listed six locations for this program. Yeah. And um, j just to note um, on, on the relative paucity of options in this category in Parramatta, you notice that the um, radius for the location is set to three kilometres, yeah. of course. We can change that to wider radius and that will obviously give us a few more options. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so let's test out another one. We can let's have a look at how the beneficiaries tab might help someone find a program thereafter. So, yeah. cool. what what I can do? Um, you know, got the reset button here. I'll just hit reset. I'm going to do another search. I want to find another charity. So, um, so that give me another one. All right. Um, let's say community development, community work, community development. Um, it's another sort of okay category. Um. Okay, I'll, I'll find. There we go. Community development. There we go. Select one. Um, we'll say we'll go Melbourne this time. We'll go Werribee. So that's in Melbourne's Melbourne's western suburbs there. So okay. growing area, probably a little bit of community development happening there. Okay, give it six kilometers. There we go. So what search results have we got? All right. Now we're going to just toggle back to the old map view here. There we go. Now we've got a few, uh, which is unsurprising. <laughs> um, quite a few actually, which is great. Yeah, um, so if we have a look now, here on the left. We want to maybe, let's see if we can narrow it a bit further. Um, maybe we'll look at it uh, in environmental. Okay. Program. That might narrow it down. This is beneficiaries tab environment. Yeah. Ah, okay. There so this go. is where the beneficiaries tab comes in handy. The number of results just for community development in an area, that was quite a lot. But then what you can do is you can go, all right, well, who do I want this program to be benefiting or what? Because environment isn't a who, obviously. And use that beneficiaries tab, uh, you know, who, who, the, uh, who it helps. Now we're down to two. Um, so that's, that's a big help. Um, and yeah, we, 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 we go from there. I suppose we can, um, we can click on a click on an option and, uh, and see what the story is. Um, what's worth mentioning here, obviously too, well, there we go. Where's it called? There it is. What's worth mentioning here too, is that the, the program name is different to the program classification. So the name of the program is, is whatever the charity you know, enters and, and puts in. The classification comes from um, a, like a set taxonomy is the, probably the best way to put it. Um, now that's a set list of classifications that has been specifically designed for the charity sector, designed uh, initially developed by our community who a lot of you would have familiarity with um, and we're using that. And um, so that's sort of the difference between, I guess, the, the program name and the program classification. Okay, yeah, you, it's a good point. You, you can't search by a program name. So we have a look on the left here. We've got a couple, we've got clean update, and we've got community support. They may be the names of the programs that the charities decided to put in, but what's important is the classification that they used for those programs. People won't be searching for the program name. They'll be using the classification to find the program. And it's important to name your program something 
useful, something that gives the, the, the member of the public an idea of what the charity does or what the program's about. But it's also really important to remember that the program search function here on the charity register uh, will go by the, the classification. It's not going to search for the name that the charity provides for the program. Yeah. Okay. So it's important just to give it a good name, but also think about the, the classification. Now we've seen how it works and it's pretty straightforward. Let's talk a little bit about how a charity can make sure it gets the most out of, out of the charity register, because as Dr. Gary Johns said, this is for charities to use as a, as a tool of promotion and important to think about it as a tool of promotion. Now, yeah, I'll jump away from the register. I'll go back into um, our presentation oh, sure, slide yeah. here. So we've got, um, we've got a, a few uh, groups to, to think about. Now, whoops, hang on a second. If we if, we're if we could go for the first one, which is charities, charities. let's have a look at yeah. how charities can get the most out of it. As, as Matt mentioned, as Dr. John's mentioned, it's almost a thought, a thought process, I guess, an approach that the register now is a way to showcase your charity's work. Um, as Dr. John said, it's beyond that compliance thing. It's, it's more than that now. Um, we know the register gets millions of, of searches a year. Um, so it's a great way to present your charity's work to a lot of people and a, div a diverse uh, a lot of people, I suppose. Um, the key thing is, again, to make sure that the programs that you, that you list in, in relation to your charity are there uh, and they're classified well. Yeah. And it also provides another presence on the internet for a charity, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, look, lots of charities obviously have their own website. Those who don't, they might use social media. Uh, use it to great effect. So um, this can be an important web presence of a different type, I suppose. It's one that allows a member of the public to check the legitimacy of a charity as well, um, check its details, get an insight into its work, um, all in the same spot. Uh, and it's free. So, I mean, all, all the good things, I suppose. And we have heard that charities um, have found it useful in collaborating or, or cooperating with other groups yeah it's 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 very useful um, in that way it's you know previously and, and and in some ways if you don't use the register it might still be the case um, finding charities with a specific purpose or a program in a specific location for collaboration or for cooperation um, even if you're working on an event, you want to work with a, another organisation. If you're fundraising, you want to work with another organisation. That can be a bit challenging. Um, it has long been a bit challenging. But, um, you know, if, for example, you've got a charity, you know, you just looked up and you wanted to collaborate on a project or a new program in even another part of the country, the program search on the register is, is very, very handy. And for charities to get the most out of it, though, it's important to understand how also other users um, we'll, we'll approach the charity register. Now, we've got two other broad groups in mind here. The first one is donors, volunteers and supporters, or we could call them potential donors, volunteers and supporters. And the other group is the established philanthropists and, and grant makers, entities that are responsible for, for giving out set funds that are set aside. So, of course, there, are some, there is some crossover between these groups of people, but we're going to take them separately to give you an indication of the, the way in which you can think about the charity register for your charity. First, donors, volunteers and supporters. Yeah. Um, look, I mean, people want to support causes. That's, that's pretty obvious. Um, they might have a cause in mind, but they might not necessarily know of a charity that works towards that cause. cause. They might not know a name that sort of thing. So these people, the potential donors or their volunteers, supporters, they can use the program search to find the cause that they're interested in. Um, and then through that, the, ch the charity that is delivering that program uh, towards that cause. So this again highlights the importance of um, I guess the classifications that a charity uses for their programs as well. Yeah, exactly right. And, and as mentioned, the program name isn't the thing that people are going to search on this part of the register. It is the classification that will get them to the program. So while the program name is important, people, of course, need to have an idea of what works 
um, involved in a program, and the name is often a good hint for that, it's not the thing that people are going to be searching. But also the location, we've got here, search the map, because the location is important too. Yeah, um, and and this is also, again, uh, important here that um, you know, charity can list multiple locations for a program. And look, in the real world, often programs do span multiple locations. So um, not only is it accurate, but it helps if a donor or a supporter, you know, a volunteer potential, um, you know, is looking to get involved uh, with a charity in a specific geographic uh, area. So if you put all, uh, you know, list all the locations uh, of a program, that potential donor or supporter or volunteer uh, has options. Uh, it's just important to note also that if you, if there is a reason that your charity does not want a location of a program being made public, and there are lots of legitimate reasons for this, it can enter a broad location such as the state or something like that, which won't provide a specific location for a program. Okay, and also donors, volunteers and supporters are taking the opportunity while they're on the charity register to check a charity's credentials yeah. Yeah. when looking for a cause or, or a program to support. Um, just have a look here. The, the, the ability to check those credentials and the ability to have a look, um, this comes about because the register has a lot of information about the charity. Um, we're talking obviously annual information statements, um, responsible people uh, details, constitution, um, people who, who visit, uh, they can check all of this sorts of, sort of information um, while they're thinking about its program. So again, there's this flow on emphasis that it's important that a charity ensures that all these other details are up to date uh, and in order as well. So making sure that your reporting is up to date, making sure that your AIS, sorry, annual information statements are done, making sure that the list of responsible people that you have listed uh, is current and is up to date, um, adding to them or subtracting from them when, when comings and goings happen, making sure there's a copy of the constitution of, uh, for your organisation on the register as well. Uh, and and pro I'll say maybe most importantly in some respects, making sure your contact details are correct and, and current, um, that's vital. Yeah, definitely. Don't, don't forget that people want to see that a charity is well run before donating time, money and, and other forms of support. Um, all of these details on the register matter. And they work together to create a, a full picture of the charity and, and the way it is run, the way it is governed. So if annual information statements are, are late or missing, um, if other important information is out of date or missing, um, it gives a certain impression of the charity. So, of course, make sure the programs are there. That's important. Make sure they're classified well. But uh, at the same time, don't forget the other details on the charity register. Yeah. And... In this way, it's probably a good idea to take the opportunity now, if you're a charity, to have a look at your listing on the charity register, check it over, see if it's all up to date, um, click around the tabs, uh, look through the information, correct anything that you might feel needs correcting, um, especially again, those contact details. Um, we know particularly email addresses can come and go, so make sure that they're all up to date. People will use the register to get in touch with a charity, uh, whether it might be to donate or to volunteer, help out in another way as a supporter. So it's important that they have a, a way to contact the charity and the way that's listed is accurate as well. Now, the other group we were talking about is philanthropists and grant makers. The difference here, I suppose, is that you know that this group of people is looking to give money. That's that's what they do. The, the charity register, now with the program search, um, is an important tool for philanthropists and grant makers in finding charities to give money to via the programs that they run. Yeah, and philanthropists and grant makers will be using the program search uh, on the register to find charities for the funds they have set aside for a certain cause. So, again, having your charity's programs listed, uh, they're named clearly, they're classified accurately and, and well, uh, and locations are included as well because some grant makers or philanthropists might uh, only fund in a certain geographic area, a, a local government area or a town. So um, all of those things will mean that your charity is, is in the game uh, when it comes to 
looking for grants, looking for philanthropy. Um, you know, grant makers and philanthropists, they're, they're often looking for charities doing specific work in a specific location. And um, the charity register can help them find that and find the charities that they actually want to target. Yeah. And just touching on the point you raised a few moments ago, importantly, they can also use the register to check off eligibility yeah. criteria for a charity. So they may check the charity's annual information statement submissions. That They may even look into the annual information statements as well. They may check the charity's financial information. They may even check the charity's constitution. And the point is that the, the new enhanced register plays an important dual role for um, this group of people, the philanthropists and the grant makers. It, the charity register can, can put a charity forward by virtue of the programs it runs, um, but it can also allow a user to check on that charity's credentials. And in the case of a philanthropist or a grant maker, make sure that they meet the required criteria for the funds that they've got on offer. Yeah, and then obviously too, once they've checked these details, they may want to get in touch with you. So again, they might use the register to get in touch with the charity. So ensure that your contact details are accurate and up to date as well on, on the register. Okay. Now just to finish off, we'll look at the how. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can edit the information on the charity register um, just to make sure that it is presenting the best picture of your charity for all the millions of searches that are going on. We'll start with um, uh, the programs. Yeah, it, look, there's two ways really when it comes down to it. Um, the annual information statement um, is is one way, um, or there's a form that we have uh, on our on our portal. That's the Change Charity Program form. The annual information statement may be the one that you're most familiar with. It's the once a year submission. That includes a lot of information about your charity, asks questions about activities and programs, finances, and all of that sort of stuff uh, over the last 12 months. Now, there is a section in there you might have noticed that uh, looks at programs, and that's uh, a section where you can add or you can take away or you can edit um, programs that your charity might, might run. Um, so that's sort of the once a year type of thing. Now, Clearly, we know that these things might change outside of your once a year annual information statement uh, efforts. So there is a, um, a change charity program form in the portal, which is designed specifically for that task. It is an easy form to use. Again, it's the same sort of, I guess, logic. Um, you can add a program, you can subtract a program, you can edit program details. So uh, they're the two, they're the two ways that we that we work uh, to to get program information up and up and going. Yeah, and just quickly, um, the summary of activities is another thing that you may have noticed on the charity register. The, the charities listing on the charity register that's contained within the annual information statement that provides a space for a charity to describe their work in general terms in whatever words they want to use and have that display in the charity register. So whereas the programs are set to classifications, that summary of activities is a spot where a charity can use its own descriptions to describe what, what work they do yeah. in, in what areas. Yeah. Okay. Um, now getting the most out of the register though, it's, I guess it's not just about this, this new, New feature and this new new programs feature. It's um the, obviously the, the programs feature is very important, but um, it's again important to remember that people are going to be checking the credentials of of charities as well. So again, we'll we'll emphasise these points to ensure that your annual information statement, your charity's annual information statement, is submitted on time. Um, making sure it's complete as well. Uh, that's that's vital. Um, and keeping other information up to date. So log into the charity portal, um, complete the form that you may need uh, for the change that you need to make. Uh, if you're not sure about which form you might need to fill in or, or what those forms cover, um, we do have a page on the website where there's a list uh, and that's at acnc.gov.au forward slash forms. And that'll give you a rundown of all the forms that are available uh, in the portal, uh, as well as a few that are available outside of the portal, I think as well. So, yeah, that's right. Now we'll move on to some questions. Actually, we've had a couple of questions come through, and just as we do move on, I will send that uh, link through to the yeah everyone here in the chat. There we go. All right. We 
one's been sent through and we, we've been asked with the new bits and pieces and the new new things that are in the uh, able to be used in the register how can perhaps a small charity or a newly established charity how can they perhaps leverage some of the the abilities that are in the uh, are in the register now to best benefit them Okay, yeah, for small charities. I, I can see because it, it seems like there's a competition with the larger charities and in the, the donor dollar. The, the beauty of the register is that it does put forward a small charity just in the same way they would put forward a big charity based on the programs that it runs. So if someone is looking for a, a, a program or looking to support a cause via a program, and your tiny charity runs the program they're looking for, it's going to show up in their search results just in the same way that it would for a large charity. So in that sense, it levels the play of playing field. And the important thing for a small charity to know is that it should provide all the programs that it runs. Um, we, you can um, input up to 10 in the annual information statement, provide appropriate classifications for them and give them, give them uh, good clear names. Even though we've mentioned that the names is not the thing that you're searching for, it can help a user identify the program that they want to support yeah. if they understand a bit about the work via via the name. But make sure the programs are there, the locations are there, and they're classified appropriately. And that's the best thing a small charity can do to put their foot forward and make sure that their programs show up as well. And and just quickly too on, on that, I guess updating those details, those program details um, regularly stops the what might be a little bit more time that needs to be spent when the annual information statement comes around. If you use the change charity program form and, and you regularly sort of update, it's a little bit of work that has a bigger benefit down the track, I suppose. Um, there was another, I guess, another question and, and maybe we've touched on it a little bit here. Um, is there a little bit of a, an opportunity here with some of these features to uh, have some increased storytelling that in mm. relating to the charity yeah, you know, the charity that we're a part of. Mm. Um, yeah, is there an opportunity for that? There is an opportunity in the annual information statement to describe the charity's work, and that would be the place where you could add a little bit of, of storytelling, I suppose, as the questioner puts it. Within the programs itself, as we've described, as we've demonstrated, they are um, categorised according to set terms. So, in in, within those terms, there isn't the uh, spot to then further describe more about the program itself, but the charity register listing has a place where a charity can describe the summary of its activities. And that, as we've mentioned, is done in your words or the, the words of the people involved in the charity rather than to set um, classifications. So the two working in tandem give a user a really good insight into the work that a charity does. And importantly, this isn't the end of the line for a user in finding a program. This connects a user, a potential donor, a volunteer, a supporter. It connects them to the charity and then naturally going to go to the charity's own website, whether that be the, you know, the home page or the particular page of a particular program, that's what can be included on a charity program and that's where the person is going to learn more about the specifics of a program rather than on the program register. So think about it as a way to, as Dr. Gary John said at the beginning, speak to the potential donors, supporters, volunteers out there, potential philanthropists and grant makers, and then they can make that connection with your charity via the charity uh, register, the program search. It's almost like a bit of an entrance way. People will use it as a bit of an entrance way into your work or into your website and, and to get them to walk through the door, I guess, is the big thing. Right, well, that does bring us to the end of the presentation today. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us and, and listen to what we have to say about the new charity register. Now, we really hope that you go out there and use it to its full potential for your charity and we hope that that connects you with lots of potential donors, volunteers and supporters and, and, and whoever else. If you want to stay in touch with everything the ACNC has to say and, and, and present and do, we've got lots of web guidance and publications on the website. We have um, a monthly e-newsletter for charitable purpose, and we also have uh, webinars like this one and podcasts. And of course, you can 
contact us by the contact us form there at that website and we're big on social media so follow us on those uh, social media accounts that we've got listed there. Thank you again for joining us today. Thanks Chris for showing us the charity register and how charities can get the most out of it. Thank you very much. Thank Tim and Rachel for answering all your questions in the background. If we didn't get to one of your questions, we will uh, get in touch with you via email and a recording of this session as well as the slides and some other resources, links to other resources will be included in a follow-up email to all that registered. If you have any um, questions, comments or feedback specifically about the webinars, um, give us an email at education at acnc.gov.au. And just on feedback, there is a very short feedback survey at the end of the webinar. When you close the GoToWebinar, you, you'll be presented with a couple of questions. I think it takes probably no more than 20 seconds, maybe 25 um, to do. And we really get a lot out of that feedback. So if you can take the time, we would really appreciate that. Once again, thanks everyone for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the session. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. See you later.